Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about random discrete variables. And this is part of our lecture series on probabilistic modeling. So we've been talking about internal randomness in our models, and we've already covered continuous random variables and how to implement them in Excel and Python. Um, and we've talked kind of generally about discrete variables, and now we're going to look at how we can implement them in our models as well in both Excel and Python. Um, so when we think about discrete variables, again, that's a variable that can take on a fixed set of values, not just a number in some range, but certain values. Uh, we can also build random discrete variables into our models. So unlike the continuous variable where the distribution is defined by a function or a curve, the discrete random variable, uh, we only have fixed numbers, a fixed set of values it can uh, take the value of. And so just each one of those values has an assigned probability. And that is our distribution for a discrete variable. So um, the general process uh, that you're going to have to follow in Excel to be able to pick a random discrete variable is you have this table of the different values of the variable and the probabilities. Then you want to add a new column to that table, which is going to be the cumulative sum of the probabilities. Um, and based off that, as well as using the RAND function, you're going to be able to combine those into an approach that can pick a random discrete variable. Um, you pull this random number from 0 to 1, the RAND function in Excel, and that is going to tell you the uh, which range of probabilities that um, we should draw from. So this will become more concrete looking at an example here. Here we have uh, three different states of the economy that we want to choose from, and we have three different probabilities associated with those states of the economy. Um, so you can think of if we have 30% recession, 50% normal, and 20% expansion, we can form ranges based off those probabilities. 0 to 30%, we're going to be in the recession range. Then add the 50, 30 to 80%, we're going to be in the normal uh, range. And with the expansion economy, additional 20%, the top 20% of the range, 80 to 100, is going to correspond to an expansion economy. Uh, and when you build this out, you don't actually have to build both the begin and end range. You can base it off of just one of the two. Um, but for sake of example, I think this makes it a little more clear that um, basically we're going to pick this random number between zero and one, and whichever range it falls in is the case that we're going to pick for the discrete random variable. Um, so just, you know, we, we pull a random number, let's say that it's 0.15, uh, well, that's between zero and 30%. And so we're going to have a recession as the case. If it's 0.45, that's between 30 and 80%. And so it's going to be the normal state of the economy and 0.94, that's between 80 and hundred percent. So that's going to be an expansionary period. Um, and Excel, um, we do have to build that out manually. Um, it's not very straightforward to do discrete random numbers in Excel. Um, whereas in Python, it is quite straightforward to do it. Uh, we have the random dot choices function, the choices function of the random module, which you just directly pass it the different uh, cases that you want to pick from, and you pass it the probabilities of each of those, and it's just going to pick the random values for us. So you don't have to do any of this forming of the ranges and checking which range it falls in. All that is going on in the background automatically for you in this random.choices function. So we will now look at an example of 
implementing this in both Excel and Python. Um, and the complete examples of both of these are on the course site as well. Um, so we're going to build out this um, discrete random variables. And I'm going to look at this in the context of we have a few different scenarios and we want to pick a scenario at random. Um, so we can do that based on the state of the economy, recession, normal expansion economy. Um, and then we want to assign a probability to each of those. So we can go with that same 30, 50, 20 uh, probabilities. And then we want to just get some um, inputs, which are going to align with those cases. So 2% interest rate in a recession, 5 in normal economy, 7 in expansion. And um, here we can go with the less financially constrained individual. They're able to save more in the recession because they're not spending as much. Um, and now we have those inputs aligned with each of the cases. Um, then we can create our cumulative probability measure, which we will use for picking the random discrete variable. Um, so that we're going to do our cumulative sum pattern that we've seen before. We're going to sum uh, from the beginning of the range fixed up until uh, the same, and it unfixed me there. So yeah, fix just the first one, not the second one. And that allows it to expand the range as you go down. Um, each one is going to be picking up additional values. Um, so now we have, you can think of this as the end range column we had seen in the example. Uh, like I said, you only need one of the two to actually be able to do this. Um, so now comes actually drawing the um, random states of the economy. Um, so the first thing we need to do is draw a probability. And so all that is is just equals rand. Um, so let's just um, get a few different random numbers here. Um, and next, we're going to figure out what is the economic state. Um, so to determine the economic state, we're going to do exactly what we just talked through a moment ago of just checking uh, which range this drawn probability lies in. So it's going to be a series of nested if statements determining which range this probability lies in. Um, so if the probability is less than or equal to this first cumulative probability, I'm going to fix that, then we're in the recession range, the 0 to 30% range. So we're going to get recession fix as a result. Otherwise, we are not in that 0 to 30 range. And so now we need to check again what range we're in. If we are, uh, again, the drawn probability is less than or equal to the next cumulative probability. So now this means because we're already not in the 0 to 30 range, this means we're now in the 30 to 80 range fixed, um, which corresponds to the normal state of the economy. Um, otherwise, now we know we're not 0 to 30, we know we're not 30 to 80, and so we're in this last range of 80 to 100. Um, so for the last one, you don't need to do another if. We know since we're not 0 to 30, we're not 30 to 80, we must be in 80 to 100, uh, so otherwise it's the expansion economy. And then we can close both those ifs. And we can drag this down. And we'll see the ones that are falling in this mid-range, normal economy. The ones that are falling in the upper range, expansion economy. Let's calculate again. 
the ones that are low values are falling as the recession economy. Um, so now, you know, just looking at these, now we're getting random discrete variables after building out this whole setup. Um, so then the other part of this would then be to get the um, variables that uh, correspond to that economic case. And there's a couple different ways you could go about this. You could use uh, VLOOKUP to be able to do this a little more generally. Uh, but I'm just going to show again here with some simple if statements. So um, if this economic state is equal to recession, then um, I'm going to get the interest rate value of the recession. Um, and here I'm going to fix only on the row and not on the column because I'm going to want to be able to drag over to be able to get the savings rate as well. So now uh, it's not recession, so it's something other than recession. So again, we need to do another if statement. If the economic state now is equal to normal, fix that. Um, then grab the normal interest rate, again, fixed on the row, but not on the column. And then similar to when we picked the economic state, uh, because it's not recession or normal, it has to be expansion. And so uh, now we don't need another if statement. It can just be otherwise it's the other interest rate. Again, fixing the row, but not the column. And then I need one additional parenthesis. I forgot that Excel was able to pick that up. Um, and then this is a percentage. Um, and we can see normal, we got the 5%. So that's working appropriately. And this is the interest rate. And now we can get the savings rate as well. Um, drag this over, drag this down. And Let's see if this is working appropriately. Something is seems to not be working appropriately. Aha. Uh, yeah, you can see it didn't pick the correct savings rate corresponding to the interest rate. And that's because I forgot to fix uh, this on the column. Um, for, so you can see that it should stay over here on normal, but it went over to uh, the interest rate. So I'm going to go in and modify that any references to the normal. Um, and um, now that should be fixed on the column. We don't want the column to move, but we do want to allow the row to move. Um, so here, fixing on the column. Um, again, over here, fixing on the column. And then we can redrag into that range um, to now apply this everywhere. And now, it is appropriately staying in that column. So let's just check over our work. Normal, we get 5% and 25%. Recession, we get 2% and 35%. Expansion, we get 7% and 15%. So it's all working appropriately now. Um, so that's a quick overview of how to do discrete random variables in Excel. Um, and you know, when you format this, you may want to hide some areas of this, like this is not important, this is not important. You could potentially hide those those areas of the sheet or otherwise change the formatting to make them uh, de-emphasize something that the uh, consumer of the model shouldn't really care about. Um, so fairly involved manual process to do that in Excel. And you can only imagine you add additional cases, you're just adding more and more uh, nested if statements, which becomes a little bit of a mess. So let's look at how we can do that in Python now. Um, so here, you know, thinking about the same kind of thing, choosing between recession, normal expansion. Um, and we want to just pick a case. Well, we just uh, take the cases and we take the probabilities of those cases and we pass those to random dot choices and that will be able to pick a random discrete value for us. It really is that simple. Um, there is one thing you'll notice with this random dot choices function is it always returns a list. That's why you see the brackets 
around the output and the result. Uh, so if you just want a single value, you can just put bracket zero on the end. That is going to pull the first value out of the list. And now we have just the random value itself. Um, and the random.choices function directly already supports picking uh, random dis multiple random discrete numbers. You pass it this k parameter, k equals however many you want to generate. Here, k equals 5. We get 5 random numbers. We can change it to 10. Or sorry, not random numbers, random cases. Um, now we've got 10 different cases, and it is really that simple to work with discrete uh, random values in Python. So then there's also a lab exercise on the discrete random numbers in both Excel and Python. And so this lab exercise, we're building out a simple model of stock returns. And basically the stock starts at $100 and then it goes through a number of different periods and uh, 100 periods here. And each period it can either go up or down. And it's going to go up or down by a fixed uh, percentage, 1% here. Um, so you're picking between these two different random discrete cases, up and down, and the 1% uh, or negative 1% uh, that goes along with that. And we have probabilities here of the stock going up and down, 60%, 40%. Uh, and you want to visualize what happens to that stock price over time. And we want to complete this entire exercise in both Excel and Python. So that's uh, generating discrete random numbers in both Excel and Python. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, next time we're going to come back and look at adding internal randomness to an existing Excel model. So thanks for listening and see you next time.